All right, all students, welcome back to another lesson. And today I'm going to answer some questions by doing some examples. I had three people ask me something um, about how to do something. So I decided I want to go ahead and answer these questions. And I know if you saw the title, it seems like I'm going to do two things, but I'm actually going to do three things. Um, all right, so Kevin Douglas asked me how to draw a beard. He also asked, have I ever drawn a picture of Jesus? Yes, I have. I would dig it out and show you, but I would have to dig it out, and that digging stuff out kills my room. Madhouse007 said, I struggle to make superheroes with projects in general. I really appreciate the videos, and I wish I was creative. It uh, feels like I'm wasting my time. You are never wasting your time. If you have talent, you're never wasting your time, even if you just draw an eye. You're improving somehow, some way. So I'm going to show you my, 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 my step to do this. And then, uh, Emilio Cabria, I probably said that real wrong. I have a bunch, but, yep, yeah, I apologize for saying it. I have a bunch of artwork, but I'm stuck when I get started. When I go to get started, nothing comes to me. So I'm going to kind of show you the way I do stuff like that. So I'm going to do the beard last because that shouldn't take too long. Uh, I struggle to do superheroes. Okay, so this one, I answered that. I answered him and said, put my seat up first. If I'm going to do a superhero, if I am wanting to do a superhero really bad and I just nothing's coming out, the first thing I would think of is I would use myself in a, as an example. I would say, if I had the choice to have a superpower, what would it be? So a lot of times when people do heroes, they have like this power, that power, on top of this power, plus this power, this power, you know, and it seems like everybody wants to just just overload their character so they can't be beat. So if you have the power of a god, and I'm fighting somebody with the power of a god as well, as soon as I punch you, you know, everything around me should explode because, I mean, you've got the power cosmic on top of this and all this, you can manipulate stuff. I just saw a video on the, the Silver Surfer, like the future Silver Surfer. And it's like, if you can manipulate any kind of matter or whatever, if somebody comes to fight me, I'm going to manipulate his matter and change it. So, but we just seem to like to fight, fight. Everything is a big fight. How can we fight something? You know, if I got that kind of power. You would only take two steps from me because I would transport you back in time or, or just stop your heart from beating. Well, I have to punch you in the face a hundred times until, you know, somebody fall out. So anyway, I would say give your character or give yourself three powers, no more than three powers. So you can choose any three powers. Don't go five, 10, 15, 20, because if you get your superhero so powerful, you have to make your villain or whatever so powerful or powerfuler because a good hero has an easy weakness or good weakness like Superman has kryptonite um, was it Green Lantern can't do anything yellow I mean you know that that that, that you need that kind of you need that kind of weakness to make for a good story because every superhero story and you see all of Netflix um, uh, um, Prime all these everything is superhero now so if you are developing a comic book or superhero get it out quick get it out quick because there's gonna come a time where just like everything else superheroes are gonna be just phased out you know first it was it was we were doing like um, army men or wards or detectives or police or this or that or driving things and then they just everybody jumps on that that one genre and they just burn it out so eventually superheroes are gonna come to be burnt out but um, for now it's hot so if you're doing a hero get it out okay so for me, realistically, and I thought about this before putting this video together, I mean, realistically, if some entity came to me and said, hey, Brian, I'm going to give you three powers. What powers would you like? Now, I'm thinking about my life, okay? I'm thinking about my my struggle, my day-to-day. -day. I work from paycheck to paycheck. I hate to go to work on Monday kind of life. I would have... Um, what did I say? I would probably have teleportation so I can go wherever I wanted to go. Uh, the power to phase through stuff like Kitty Pride. I can like go, you know, walk the wall or whatever. And then, um, what is it? Mind control. You know, you didn't see me. You didn't see me here taking this money. So that those three would probably be my best. I would love flight, but why would I need to fly if I could teleport to some place? You know, so uh, why would I need to fight you if I could do mind control? 
So that would be like my three. Yes, I would like to have the, the super strength and the flight and the invulnerability. But in this time period that we live in, this earth, this 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 time, who am I going to fight? Who do I need to be, you know, strong enough for the, to fight the Hulk? So for now, I would keep it in that, keep it keep it earthly, you know. So those would be my three powers. So now. What would I do with those powers other than like travel and enjoy life or, you know, empty up a bank a couple times, you know, so, but you have to have, once you have the powers, you need a, a, um, something that's going on to stop you. So if I had those powers, let's just say, this is me. This is my quick story. I had those powers. Somebody learned that I had those powers or an organization learned <clears throat> that I had those powers. So now they're trying to stop me. So that's my, my, the bad guy that's after me, this organization. So what do I have to do? to either stop this organization or get away from this organization. So thinking about that, think a little more deeper into your story. Let's just say they kidnap my parents. They can't find me, so they grab my parents or they grab my wife or my child or whatever. So I have to get them back, okay? So maybe they set a trap somewhere for me. So if I teleport someplace, they have like this energy shield that's going to stop me. But I still have my mind control. I can still phase through like the ground underneath. So once you find out your powers, and once you do your um, your situation, not not bad guy, but situation where it's going to be, then your story kind of flows. And then later on, if you need a, a helper for whatever reason, ask a friend the same question. If you had two powers or three powers, no more than three, what powers would that be? And then you can kind of fit him into your life story as well, or her into your life story as well. So a lot of talking, no drawing. So I would think that the hardest part about, which can you see better, blue or red? I would think the hardest part about, uh, let's go blue, doing a character would probably be the costume that you would use. Now for me, if I am, if I have power tomorrow, I was just in a sweatsuit, you know, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody. I'm not trying to be, um, you know, somebody's poster boy for superheroes or whatever. So I would just use a sweatsuit and then, you know, that's cool because once I finish, you're not going to remember that I was there anyway. So, so sweatsuit is good enough for me now. But I mean, if you want to do like a, a superhero type of a thing, then you're going to have to do your superhero kind of costume. And then, as I showed in my other video, it's hard to do colors, especially if you have a group. It's hard to do colors, a color scheme for your character. So, in essence, what would you not be ashamed to wear? If I'm going out in public and I'm going to be, you know, designated or dubbed, oh, this new superhero, what would I not be ashamed to wear? Would I wear some little tight-fitting something? All right, sorry about that. My camera kind of went off on me. I don't know why it cut off, but it cut off on me. So as I was saying, if you had the powers, what kind of costume would you wear in public? Or would, would you be not be ashamed of some tight fitting something or some loose something, uh, you know, something that shows off your curves or something that makes you look slimmer? So that would be the thing. And of course, it has to, a lot of it has to do with what type of powers that you have. If you have a, let's just say like the human torch, if your powers were flames i don't think you would wear a lot of armor with a ball and chain because you know your powers are fire so you wouldn't cover your body up in armor i mean you could but i mean i don't think that would be the first thing you've thought about so you think about what would i wear and then what color would it be am i going to be somebody that's in the shadows you wear dark but am i going to be somebody that stands out you wear a nice bright color red or yellow or something like that so that would be the thing if you're drawing a hero. If you're trying to come up with a hero, what powers, um, what's the situation that's happening or what, make up a situation that, that's going to happen to you. You know, if you, if you realistically, let's just do this. If you realistically won a hundred billion dollars, whatever lottery, a hundred billion dollars tax free, what do you think would happen to you other than quit your job or, you know, live comfortably? How many people would knock on your door when they find out who you are? You know, is there a chance that somebody would try to kidnap your your kids or, or your family to get some of that money? How many people would run up to you 
and you know jump on your car begging you for money so you have to think about that kind of thing if I had these kind of powers and I was the first person and the only person that had like powers of a superhero what would realistically happen to me so you think about that as you work on your character and your story which that is your story so I am just drawing this just so that you guys can see a drawing versus me just sitting here talking uh what was I gonna say about that okay having a problem superhero think about yourself the powers what what trouble would you get into with the powers who would try to stop you if you need a sidekick do the same thing for that as a friend and um yeah, I think that's gonna be that would be it with that. If you try to draw a superhero, if you're trying to get like really, really into it, like drawing um, a whole team, that would be the same thing. You would have to just figure out the powers. How many people would you have on a team? Uh, what what is the team for? Is the team like mercenaries? You know, going and saving people. Is it like an army thing? Is it a superhero thing? What is their purpose? So for the purpose, you would have to have a character for specialized mission okay like say somebody that's invisible you know he could he could go and sneak in and uh see what's going on or somebody that can really hear really good that he could hear you know somebody coming or people talking from you know great distance away maybe a sharp shooter somebody that won't miss like bullseye you know but it depends on what your situation is so if you have that characters and usually you have the strong guy you have the leader which is you know whatever you have the fighter the wolverine type and everything is like really based off x-men because i think x-men was i don't want to say one of the first superhero teams but because they were so popular everybody based their kind of stuff off of them you know you have the beautiful woman who's in love with the leader and um whatever power she has you know but you have the big guy the strong guy usually a fast guy and a fighter and a leader, whatever the leader does, and a woman that's like usually half naked that can probably manipulate stuff. So, but all teams are kind of like that. So you base your power off what um, what reason they are there for. So, you, like I say, somebody quick, somebody that's gonna be invisible, somebody that's just genius, that type of thing. So, throwing this other leg in here. That should be straight. That should be coming out like that. I think that would be it for that particular that particular thing. So, yeah. All right. This other one is, what was it about drawing? Uh, drawing and nothing comes out. I have a bunch of art, but I'm stuck when, it, when I get started because nothing comes out. So, I don't want to finish this later. I kind of like the little pose. If you're the type that want to draw, you want to draw, but you say, I don't know what to draw. I don't know what to draw. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Draw for fun. Take a piece of notebook paper or something that you're going to throw away. Um, I don't have any something I'm going to throw away. And just draw anything, anything. Draw a square. Draw another square. Draw another square. Another square. Basically, what you're doing, you're releasing that pressure because you're drawing stuff that you really don't care about. Draw a circle. Here's a circle here. I'm going to put a stick here. Here's a circle here. Maybe this is a barbell. Barbell? Yeah, barbell. And then somebody's going to try to pick the barbell up or somebody's holding the barbell. Uh, you know, so something like this I don't really care about. But it gets my mind working and it gets my hand loose. And eventually I'm going to figure out something to draw. Or I'm going to say, oh, let me, let me, let me detail this. Let me... Take this guy and detail that. And he's got long flowy hair and he's smiling because he just picked up this massive amount of weight for the very first time. And I'm not trying to be perfect, so don't try to be perfect. Just, you know, just go with the flow. Go with the flow. So what is that thumb? That thumb's going to be on the inside. Go with the flow and then just, just draw and have fun. And eventually, you will have an idea. You will have fun, number one, drawing because you won't care. And after um, the pressure of, I didn't get it right. Put some big old boots on them or something. 
just for fun. And then that will actually help you to draw what it is that you want to draw. Because it's in your head, it's in there, you just got to get it to come out. So, uh, you know, whatever, just it doesn't make a difference. Just start drawing something and, and see what comes out of it. A little spaceship with an antenna on top of it, just the, the, the legs. Draw a face, draw, you know, just draw, you know, cranky kind of face. Whatever is on your mind or however the pencil leads you, just draw that and then keep going. Just keep drawing. Draw anything, anything. Even if you just draw something and, and color it. Just like, oh, just do some shading. I'll shade this a little darker. You know, the, your, your box is the same thing. Then after you finish, grab an ink pen. Just ink it just, just for the fun of it. If you have markers or crayons or whatever, and just, just you know, you you you're getting stress release. I don't want to say you're killing time, but the more you draw, the better you become. Depending on period, just the more you draw, the better you become. Draw some crazy hands, just something that you are having trouble with. Draw that, and like I say, you're not going to care because. There's nothing that you're going to keep. There's nothing you're going to show. And then just keep drawing. So the bottom line of that, but with that is just draw something, anything that you don't really care about. If you can find some raggedy paper, use that raggedy paper and then just throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. So... That would be my thing to that. And then, so the last one is, who was it? Kevin Douglas, drawing a beard. Has trouble drawing a beard. And after this, I think I'm going to finish that. I don't know what I'm going to do. Drawing a beard. So draw a quick head real quick. Front and a profile. So this is the front of my head. It's just going to be a quick head. My nose and my mouth, which is very important. And here's my eye, which is not so important for a beard. And here's my ears, which is kind of important for a beard. And then I'll do the side. I'll do this side here. Here is my forehead. It's under the eye. What is it? The brow. Nose. This part that comes out. This is the, what is this called? A philtrum, I believe. This little piece. Which my grandmother used to call it the snot catcher. So here's the mouth. Do a little chin coming up. Here's your ear, and here is the rest of your head. So can you see that in red? Because I want to draw a blue beard. I was gonna draw a red beard, but he's blue beard. So I need a little define this a little bit more. Here's your bottom lip, and this is just represents the bottom lip, and here's your chin right here. And let's get that head kind of right. So we have hair. Okay, you didn't say anything about not having having trouble drawing hair. Goes down to your sideburns. Blue, Brian, blue. However, your haircut is, whether it's a regular haircut or just a balding type of person. And I draw a better little face than that because I can. And that just makes them older. The more lines you put in a face, the older the person's going to look. So, Now, this is important. This filtrum is important because when you have a mustache, and we'll start off with a mustache, hair usually doesn't grow in this little piece unless you're just really, really, really unkept or just really a hairy person. So it's really not going to grow over the mouth unless you let it grow over your mouth. So let's just do this. So it's gonna go down. So let's have an ending to my mouth. Let's have a defined ending to my mouth. Get a little bit of curve in here. And my mouth ends right here. Here's the bottom lip. So for mustache, it's gonna be right up under the nose. Some people are just straight hairy hair all up in their nose, but you just do a little bit like that, coming, curving around the mouth, having this filtrum open. 
It's kind of like drawing an eyebrow. Same thing. Drawing an eyebrow, here's a filter, and here's your nose under there. No big thing. Now, when you draw a beard, there's all types of beard, but you're talking about Jesus who had a beard. <laughs> I guess he had a beard. I never saw him, but all the drawings say so. So let's just draw um, types. So for if you ever draw another character, shaving one, you can have the comes down. It's going to curve down like this. It's going to curve down like that. So people will sh shave it like that. That's like, was it Freddie, Freddie Mercury from Queen? Then if you let it go, it's going to come around. And it's going to go up. And this is like well well kept shaven like that. And then you're going to have that your goatee for most artists like that. But it's going to go to the side of the face. It's going to come down and it's going to go up to the side of the face. Some, sometimes you can just have it on the corner going up this. Or you can have it go down. It depends on the cut. But if you're talking about somebody that's been in the wilderness, I don't think Jesus was raggedy looking. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure somebody took some scissors or a knife and you know shaved them nicely. But it'll go up and it's going to connect to the sideburns like that. And it's going to come down the face. Now, how long of a beard are we talking about? You can keep it right on the, the you can keep it the shape of the face. So this is all this is going to be one piece. Shape of the face or you can let it come off of the face a little bit, depending on the type of beard you want to draw. You can have it, you know, just a little bit of, um, what it is, what's the words of like the hair spiky or whatever, depends on, you know, how, how, how much of a beard you want to have, or you can have it come all the way down, coming out and just all the way down. And then do the, do the, um, like who ZZ Top? I think ZZ Top had that where they had the, the beard so long they put the put the little twist tile scrunchy thing on there to make the beard like that. But we're not talking ZZ Top. But for character character design, you know, you have your beard as long as you want, and then of course you have to erase erase everything under the beard. So you, have, you went from your mustache to your little Freddie Mercury thing to your, I think it's a goatee for the artist, to a full beard. It's really simple, and let me do it from the side so it'll be the same thing. You have this part here, the little part that curves here. Let me ink this just, just because. So yeah, it's going to be here and around, up, connect to the... Um, sideburns and you can have some shape you can have it go down and up depending on you know how you want to have it cut connects to the sideburns and then down you're gonna have here and you you can you can instead of having it just like straight like that give it some some shape to it And usually I'll go in versus coming out. So I'll pull my lines like in versus coming out like this. Because going in, I'll know where the actual line is. Like here, if I go in, I can stay on my hairline versus if I'm coming out, I'll be like way off the hairline somewhere. It's kind of hard to, to stay with the hairline, but you do, you know, you do what you want to do. So here's your beard, and then of course your sideburns are going to come down and connect to the beard. Depends on how hairy this person is. And of course, this is going to come down. It's going to be like this. And then your hair is going to come down, and it's the same thing on the face. Depending on the type of hair, because some people have the mustache that is kind of thicker than the, the that over, over, overlaps, overlaps the um, beard. And this, usually this, I will do more of a this like that to give you that room for the mouth. But some people's beards come all the way up to the mouth. Like I said, some people's beards will cover the mouth. So, you know, your hair goes back to the side, 
This way, if you're doing sideburns, it's gonna go back. So as you come down, I'll start angling those lines down like this. Same way, I mean, I wouldn't have it like this, but I would just use more lines from that going to that angle. And then go straight up here, just like this, going straight, and then you'll start to go up with your hair or back with your hair. And it depends on what kind of haircut you have. So if I did the side, 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 where's my blue? You're gonna have that space right there and the same thing, it's gonna come back and then stop here for your regular mustache. Let me make that a little darker, I don't know if you guys can see that. Stop there, you're gonna come down for that. I don't even know what they call that. Was it who uh, Hulk Hogan had that? Was the guy from West Coast Chopper? He used to like that show. Was it West Coast Chopper though? Was it no? It was something something Choppers. Was it West? Coast? I, anyway, I'll think of it in a minute. He had that. We shaved everything, and then wants to say if you come, if you're gonna have the full beard, it's gonna be here, dip down, and then connect here. Tuttle something Tuttle 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 from American Chopper. There you go. And then it's going to go back. Here's your here's your hair. Here's your hair line like that. Here's your um, sideburns and your hair comes out here. So, of course, your beard is going to come up on the side of your face and connect with that. Come down here and then depending on how long comes off the face and up here. So that is how you would draw a mustache, mustache, a whole beard. And as I said, pull, I'm, I pull my lines in instead of out. And it depends on, I guess, the, the space on the hair, depending on how, how long your beard is. Like if you just want to do like stubble, just short lines. If it's like really long, then I'll do my long lines and maybe get some waves or something in there. leaving some room for light. Depends on how deep you want to, you know, how much detail you want to put in the person's beard. Hair is never an easy thing because hair just goes all over the place. But there is method to hair's madness because there is light and dark, shadow and light in a beard and in hairstyles. So again, here, bring this down. This is gonna go kind of back, unless you just want one color. Like the beard is all black with not much shadow. Coming up here, coming down the side of the face. And again, it depends on how long you want the beard, and of course it's gonna come down. This is gonna to go to the side where you have your hair kind of pulling in again. And then whatever hairstyle you choose to have. Of course, this is your neck. It's going to be covering your neck because your chin is going to be like this. Then you're going to have that low, that lower part of your chin, and then you can have your neck like that. So that should cover your question on how to do beards. And if you want long hair, just come down. Either it can cover the ears or go behind the ears. And it's straggly, just like the beard, but make 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 the ends of the beard more darker. So when you do your hair behind it, leave some light. But don't connect the beard to the to the hair to the beard, so that you know. Okay, that's um that's his hair, and the rest is his beard because you did that dark line more darker 
you can have some connected, but because you got the dark line, you'll know the difference between the beard and the hair. So, or you can make the beard the lines more closer to the beard, or give more more darkness to the beard, and the hair could be just more straight. Also showing the difference between the beard and the hair. And then your neck, however your neck is gonna go. Gotta, gotta have your neck here, so the neck is gonna be in front of the beard, the hair. Get it straight, Brian. So there you go. Why am I drawing this? I could be drawing my, my man, like I said. Yeah, there you go. So, that almost looked like Bob Ross a little bit. So this guy, I have no idea. I'm just gonna do the position, just to, just to, just to round it off. Just to round it off. Because this video has 23 minutes. I'm trying to get a 10 minute video, but uh, who can say? If I'll ever get it that way. This arm is gonna go down and maybe come out like this, which is too 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 um, too high. And maybe I'll use this for my book. I don't know, I don't know. This needs to come down more. Remember that wrist should be right there at the crotch. This should be right at the bottom of the uh, rib cage. Your bicep is long enough to drop to the bottom of your rib cage, unless you have that arm out. But it should be more like this, this and that way I can see the separation. The wrist would be right there, my hand would be right here because this would be more of an angle this hand would drop down lower than the other hand and then my foot. And I actually thought the feet were going to go off, which it probably will go off. So I'll see some heel right here and then I bring this in front of it. And that's how you can kind of do a uh, foot showing some of the heel because when I teach people how to do feet, basic feet are going to be triangles two triangles and then you put like a little curve in here and that could be for the, the toe but if you want to draw that and put some show some heel you just you do this and then you just put a little bit of heel behind that and then you just kind of shape this up a little bit more kind of like it's going this way and this one is going like this way and you can just put a little heel back here and it will look like um it'll be a different angle for the foot without just being like really crazy flat. So got my ankle, my heel, because the foot is more of a, a um, what do you call it, a wedge like that. So if you think about that, that whole wedge thing, this line here is going to cover up some of, it's going to cover up that foot and you have your heel back here. So it's like that and I'll just bring this part down this part up like that and if you want to you can do the thing to show where the toe or where it dips down and comes up but so yeah that's just this and then just add some of the heel back here and then you have your feet foot quick foot and that all depends on the angle of the foot because if your foot and i'm getting into teacher mode teacher mode if your floor is like this, your foot is going to be sitting flat on the floor. If your floor is like this, slanted, then your feet are going to have to, like I said, be in that, that um, wedge kind of mode because it's going to have to sit on that floor because it's at an angle. That floor is at an angle, so your feet are going to have to come down at an angle, and that kind of tells you how... Um, the angle of your floor. 
yeah so the more this comes down the more that foot has to sit on that floor the more that foot you're going to see on that floor and of course the more you're going to see the more angled your uh whole body character is going to be so i'm not going to get into teacher mode but that's just when you when you draw feet and you want to see that little bit of heel So yeah, that is going to be it. Ah, thumbnail. That's the hardest part about doing videos is the thumbnail. What thumbnail? What kind of thumbnail? Because the thumbnail is what attracts people to looking at the video, even though the video could be great because it's packed with information. Nobody's going to look at something just because that's why women always have show themselves in skimpy outfits because sex sells and people watch their videos because they got nice bodies. So anyway, yeah. That's going to be it. He's looking this way for me. And thank you guys for watching. And all you guys that left comments, I've got to get back into viewing my comments because I'm doing so much. Like the kids' channel, which is like right here. So anyway, it's going to be at the end of the video. I'm doing the kids' channel so the kids can learn how to draw. Or if you're not that good to do this yet, you can watch the kids' channel. And it's showing you this stuff really easier along with doing clothes and we just I'll keep progressing with the kids channel. So that's going to be it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video and thank you for the idea. I forgot who it was that gave me the idea to do this. One of you two got three guys. So that's it. I'll see you. I'm going to ramble like I always do. See you in the next video.